Somebody shout, praise the Lord. Your miracle has come. My miracle has come. Tonight is coming your way. Breakthrough. Healing. Miracle. Deliverance. Supernatural. Coming upon every life in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you tonight. We well, bless your name. That prophecy in singing will be fulfilled. Miracle, healing, salvation, deliverance, the grace of God will come upon every life in Jesus' name. Lord, we believe. Lord, we receive. It is ours even tonight. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Tonight, we're coming back to Ezekiel. In fact, Ezekiel is the pivot in the foundation, in the cornerstone of the revelation of God during this week, showers of blessing. Look at Ezekiel chapter 34, reading from verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. I thought you will give me a good amen. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. Hold on to that. Look at chapter 36, verse 11. In chapter 36, verse 11, And I will multiply upon you, man, and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit, and I will settle you. I will settle you. It will settle your family. It will settle your business. It will settle your life. All those tears of confusion, their tears are wiped away. I will settle you after your old estates and will do better. 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 Unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. I want you to join those two verses together. Showers of blessing and then a better life. Showers of blessing and a higher life. Showers of blessing and a greater life. I see you there and everything that appears, I cannot move on. The gate will be open for you tonight. I cannot rise up. The door is open for you tonight. I am always having challenges, and it is like that in our family. And I cannot, I take cannot out of your life, and I put you can. I can. You can. I can. I can rise up. You are rising up tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, I come to talk to you on the prophet's ministry of showers for a better life. Showers for a better life. Showers for a better life. Now, Ezekiel told us there shall be showers of blessing. Ezekiel told us there's going to be a better life and it showers for a better life. And I want to ask Ezekiel tonight, what... You do you tell us, tell me, tell him, tell her to do that the showers of the better life 
will come. S, speak. H, hear. O, open. W, one. And E, acquire. R, repent. And S, surrender. Ezekiel said, that's all he has for us. And once we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you are there. Your healing is there. Your salvation is there. The power of heaven is there upon your life in Jesus' name. Showers will come upon your life. Now, we're going to do, look at them one by one. Number one, speak for the performance of seven whole full showers. Speak for the performance of seven fold showers. That's what God told Ezekiel. Look at chapter 3, verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, each that thou findest, each this rule, and go speak. And go speak to the house of Israel. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, go. Get thee unto the house of Israel and uh, speak my words unto them. That's how the showers come. That's how the blessings come. That's how your salvation comes. That is how the sevenfold blessings of the showers will come upon your life. Is speak. And then, look at verse 10, it says in verse 10, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears. And then in verse 11, it says, Go, get thee to them of the captivity. Your captivity will be rolled away tonight. Unto the children of thy people and speak unto them. You know, showers come and the preacher comes and the prophet comes and the pastor comes, the evangelist comes and he speaks to you and you are there and you are hearing and you are accepting and you are beholding and you are embracing and you say the word I hear is mine. Showers will come in your life. Power will come in your life. Every yoke of the devil will be shattered and taken away out of your life in Jesus' name. Now, now, I said seven full showers. Seven full, number one, salvation. Tonight, salvation is yours. Number two, I didn't hear that amen very well. Number two, holiness, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, as you are here, you get healed, you get delivered, you get set free, you get exalted, you get promoted, and your business will boom and expand. But you know, if you have all the world and you don't have holiness, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no one in the crusade, no one in the church, no one in any country will see the Lord. So he gives us his salvation and his for showers. H is holiness and then Three, outpouring, outpouring. It's coming from heaven and the Lord will pour it upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Number four, there's wholeness, wholeness. You know, if your hand is not working, you are not whole. If your feet are not working, you are not whole. If your tongue cannot talk, you are not whole. If your eyes cannot see, you are not whole. But tonight, wholeness will come to you. Every part of your body. Every part of your life will receive a divine transformation today and you are going to be made whole in Jesus' name. If you could not see, you will see. If you could not talk, you will talk. If you could not walk, you will walk. If you could not leap and jump and run, you will leap and jump and run in Jesus' name. 
if you could not have a child and the doctor says something is missing there something is missing there tonight you are made whole your miracle child has come next time when we have the crusade we're going to Uyo next month and when we give testimony there I will be waiting for your testimony in you. Now you are pregnant. Now a baby is coming. Give me potacot. Amen. Wholeness. He is expectation. Expectation. Everything you expect that God will do. As our choir said, shake my hand. Congratulations. It's a come. I said it has come. And then recovery. Recovery has come for you. Recovery has come for your family. Recovery has come for everyone. And then there is strength. You are strong. Let the weak say. That's the sevenfold shower. And it's coming upon your life. Tonight. You will not miss your miracle. You will not miss his power. You will not miss the divine rain coming upon you from heaven in Jesus' name. Look at something here. Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 25. For I am the Lord. I will speak. That's the word. God speaks, Ezekiel speaks, the preacher speaks, and what is spoken will be done in your life. I shall speak, and then it says, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. The word that I shall speak shall come to pass, it shall no more delay. It shall no more be prolonged in your days at your time. <laughs> you know, sometimes somebody takes an exam and the certificate is coming. Before the certificate gets there, the fellow is dead. Now certificate is there, but the person having the certificate is gone. Sometimes you pay for a car, somebody there. And then uh, the car has not come. Before they deliver the car, they say the fellow is gone. Sometimes the people that have been praying, 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 and then they want to have this, they want to have that, and before that thing comes, the fellow is gone. You will not die before your miracle. You will not die before your blessing. In your days, he says, in your days, I will say the word. I will perform it, says the Lord God. Today, I say today, he will speak the word. And the Lord will perform it in your life. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, therefore say unto them, the Lord sent me to say unto you. Do you believe? Do you accept? Do you know you are going to have everything God sends me to pronounce here today? Do you know you are going to have everything? Therefore say unto them, thus says the Lord God. There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. There shall none of my words be delayed anymore. But the words which I have spoken shall be done. Shall be done. Praise the Lord tonight you are blessed. Praise the Lord, your miracle has arrived. It's just for us to finish the, uh, the meeting and the prayer. And then the angels of God are there handing yours to you and yours to you and yours to you to everyone. Because that which I have spoken shall be done, says the Lord. Somebody shout, Amen. <laughs> S in the showers from Ezekiel. What do you have to do? Number one, speak. H is now to hear what you 
have from the Lord. You hear the word from the Most High. You hear the word from the Most High. Let me explain that word, that name, the Most High. That's the Almighty. That's the God of heaven. That's the one that cannot fail. And you know, anything anybody has spoken against your life from the valley, the Most High will cancel it. Anything they have spoken on the ground in the forest, the Most High will cancel that. Anything that is coming from the ocean, from the bush spirit, and from the water spirit, and from the whatever spirit, Most High, Most High, there is nothing, there is no word, there is no power, there is, no, there is nothing that is higher than the Most High. What the Most High is saying to you today, as you're here, it will cancel everything under the sun. Cancel everything in the sea. The Lord has come to bless you today. And age is here. The word from the Most High. Look at Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 10. It says, moreover, it said unto me, Son of man, all the words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine, with thine ear. How do you get healed? It is not your hand that tells you you are healed, your heart. It is not your eyeball that tells you you are healed, your heart. It is the word that comes to your heart. And your heart, once your heart agrees, I will heal you, your heart agrees. I will save you, your heart agrees. I will deliver you, your heart agrees. What your heart has heard and agrees to, that heart will send the information to your eyes that you can now open your eyes, now you can see. That heart will send information to your feet. Now you're whole. Therefore, you can rise up and walk. Your heart will send the information to all the parts of your body. And thank God your miracle is there. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart and hear, hear, with their ears. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, Son of man, I made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning for me. Chapter 37. Ezekiel 37. We're looking at verse 4. It says again, He said unto me, Prophesy. Unto these bowls and say unto them, O ye dry bowls, hear. O ye dry bowls, hear. It doesn't matter your condition. Dry bones, dry body, dry brain, dry cells, dry whatever. Anything that is dried up, the way the new life will come is that you hear. He speaks. You hear, hear the word of the Lord. Look at verse 5. It says, Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. And ye shall live. Ye shall live. Cancer patient, you will not die. The person that is having what they call incurable disease, you will not die. You hear the word and ye shall live. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, So I prophesied, so I spoke, so I declared as he commanded me, and breath came into them. When I hear from heaven, then I tell you what I've heard, and you accept, and you receive, breath will come into you. Life will come into you. New life, great life, long life 
will come unto you in Jesus' name. So, so, so I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them and they lived. Everyone, and they lived. Everyone, and they lived. And they stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. An exceeding great army. S speak. H hear. O open. Open. Open the gates for the oppressed. Open the gates for the oppressed. Every oppression tonight is taken away. But you know, as the gate is open, you have to come out. I said you come out. You know some people, Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang praises unto God. And the foundations of their prison were shaking. And the doors were open. But even though the doors were open, they were just looking at one another. They didn't come out. And then the Philippian jailer came and took his sword as if he wanted to kill himself. And Paul the apostle said, hey, don't bother, don't kill yourself. We're all here. Nobody is moving. They didn't move away when their doors opened. Now, you'll not do like that. Tonight, your door will be open. The gate will be open. And at the gates open, you come out of oppression. You come out of the evil power. You come out of that suppression and that sickness. You come out tonight in Jesus' name. Look at Ezekiel chapter 37. I'm reading from verse 12. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. I miss your amen. I will open your graves. The most impossible thing in the language of man, if, if you are locked up, in a room, we can look for the key and open the door and you come out. That's easy. If you are locked up in a particular country, then we can push every button and pull every button and eventually the country is open. You can come out. But when you have left the earth and you are now in the graves, the only one that can open the graves for you to come out in the almighty God and everyone that has been locked in in oppression and there you are inside there your graves are open tonight God said I will I will I will Jesus had been crucified and then he died they put him in the grave and they rolled a great, mighty, immovable stone on the grave. And the soldiers were all around. And then, when God says, I will, no soldier can stop that. When God says, I will, no Jewish religion can stop that. When God says, I will, no stone can, can change that. And power came from heaven. Rolled away the stone. Every stone that kept you inside that bondage is rolled away tonight in Jesus' name. And the grave was open, And Jesus came forth. You're welcome forth. In the power of God, you will come forth. Out of that oppression, out of that evil thing pressing you down, you come forth in Jesus' name. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, 
I will open your graves and cause you to come up, come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, and you shall know that I am, not I was, not I will be, I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you out of your graves. Verse 14, verse 14 says, I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. Praise the Lord, you will live. I said, praise the Lord, you will live. Even tonight, tonight, if you are near the grave, if you are near being buried, power is coming now. Resurrection power. Heaven's power will come upon you there. You will live. If you are carrying the certificate of death, and the certificate of impossibility, they have written it down there. They said, finish. Uh -uh. God is not finished with you yet. That's why you are connected to this crusade. Ye shall live, and then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. A performance in your life. A miracle in your life. S speak, H hear, O open, W now, one the people, one the people, as an earnest watchman. He comes to you, and that's Ezekiel. Ezekiel is showing us what happens. One, to speak, two, to hear. Three to open and then four W is to warn the people as an earnest watchman. That's why he comes. His warning is to say, This is your time. Don't miss your time. You will not miss your time in Jesus' name. By looking at Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 17, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them a warning from me. In verse 18, it says, when I say, Unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked of his wicked way to save his life. Have you noticed something there? I say to a wicked man, thou shalt surely die. You know, some people, they read only one part of a sentence. Thou shalt surely die. You know, some people, they hear the beginning. They don't wait until they hear the end of the sentence. Now, to save his life, that even the prophet Isaiah might tell you that shall surely die. Even the word of God coming to you with a great prophecy might tell you the soul that sinneth it shall die. But even then you can still have life. I said you can still have life. And then Ezekiel, the earnest watchman, he comes and he wants the people to save their life. But if they don't hear, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, yet, if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not, from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Then he tells us in verse 20, he says in verse 20, 
Again, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Righteous man, he backslides, he throws away righteousness. He says, if I remain righteous, I will not get all the money I want to get from these people. He says, if I remain in righteousness, I will not enjoy this, enjoy that. He throws away righteousness if he dies in that condition. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he had done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. In verse 21, it says in verse 21, Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that he, the righteous, sin not, and he does not sin, the grace of God abides in his life, and he does not go back to sin, he shall surely live. That's me. I said that's me. The warning you receive from the word of God, you abide in that warning. You accept that warning. You take hold of that warning. You believe and you live according to the warning that he has given you. Thou shalt surely live. Because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. And I pray all that the Lord has warned us about. Sin causes death. Sin causes judgment. Sin, if it's not repented of, will make a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, small and great, to spend eternity far away from God in a place of punishment, hellfire. The warning is there, but you know, as you heed the warning, as you accept the warning, as you live in the grace of God because of the warning, you will live. Today, you will live. Long, long time, you will live. And then, eternally, you will live in Jesus' name. Now, we have the next letter E, and that is inquire. Inquire for blessings from the eternal. Inquire. You know, remember, Ezekiel is giving us the ministry that will help us to have a better life through the showers of blessing. That's why we're listening to Ezekiel tonight and all these references are coming from Ezekiel. Look at Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 37. It says, thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of, inquired of, we will go to him, we will pray, we will ask him, I will yet for this be inquired of the house by the house of Israel to do it for them. I talk about salvation, they must inquire, they must ask, I'll do it for them. I talk about healing, they must inquire and ask and pray, I'll do it for them. I talk about the outpouring, outflow of the blessing, the mercy of God upon them. They must ask, they must inquire, I'll do it for them. I talk of the wonders, the wonders of a changed life and the wonders of a new life. They must inquire, they must ask, they must pray, I'll do it for them. I talk of emancipation, I talk of eliminating every evil sin that has come in their lives. They must inquire, and then I'll do it for them. I talk of recovery, total recovery, from every sickness and from every infirmity. They must inquire, and I'll do it for them. I talk of super 
abundance and the abundance of the Lord is coming upon your life tonight they must inquire and then I will do it for them look at this thus says the Lord God thus says the Lord God I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them I will increase them with men like a flood. It will be done. I said it will be done. Look at verse 11 once again in that same chapter. What the Lord is saying, you will inquire, you will ask, you will pray, you will demand. And he will do it for you in verse 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast. And they shall increase and bring forth fruit you bring forth fruit you are going to become productive after the showers of blessing a crusade everything that has gone dormant will come alive in your life in jesus name you'll bring forth fruit and i will settle you after your old estate and will do better unto you than at your beginnings and ye shall know that I am the Lord but they must inquire before I do it for them look at verse 25 in verse 25 then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean your heart will become clean clean enough to go to heaven your life will become clean. Your family will become clean. And every evil, dirty thing, defilement around you, within you, it will cleanse everything away in Jesus' name. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall. Who is that person? Ye shall. I said to his that person, ye shall. Ye shall be clean. God bless you. It is done from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Look at this in verse 26. Verse 26 is still saying, I will. A new heart also will I give you. I didn't hear you, amen. A new heart. A new heart. A new heart will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh Amen. I can't hear you Amen. you know sometimes you are alive you are active you are passionate you are zealous and your heart is saying go get it success go and get that and this vision that you have go pursue you are going to have then as you leave the meeting the heart is stony. It's like dead. All the push, all the desire, all the aspiration. I want to be something, something in the world, something in the kingdom, something in the church, something in, uh, for the glory of God. I want to be all that passion uh, is gone. And there's no zeal. And there's no life. And then the earnestness to want to have everything is gone and now the lord says that stony heart that heart that is not having the passion again and not having the zeal again and not having the push again and it just dead there like a stone the lord said i'll take that stony heart away and then he says a new heart somebody there shout a new heart it says a new heart will i give up sometimes the heart is stony and the stony heart is so hard of hearing it will not hear anything it's hard it's stony it's stubborn it's on moving, it's on yielding, and you say, you know, I want, I want to, but my heart is stony. The Lord tonight said, I will. Somebody shout, I will. It will take the stony heart, the stubborn heart, 
the hardened heart, the heart of Pharaoh. It will take that away from you tonight, and then your heart will be pliable and soft. A heart of flesh will I give unto you. The Lord will do it. At salvation, he gives us the fulfillment of verse 25. It cleanses us. It washes us. And then all the uncleanness, everything is gone. That's salvation. Verse 26 is talking about sanctification. When he comes and then he does an approaching. And he says that nature of sin, that nature of Adam, I will approach. He will approach everything away from your life in Jesus' name. It will save you. It will save you. And yet for this you must inquire of me to do it for you. And then it will sanctify you. And that sanctification you must inquire of me to do it for you. Verse 25, that's salvation. Verse 26, that's sanctification. Look at verse 27 there. Verse 27, this is the outpouring and the baptism and the immersion in the Holy Ghost. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. Somebody shout, Amen! Amen. For salvation, you must inquire of him to do that for you. For sanctification, holiness, you must inquire of him to do it for you. And then for the power, the Holy Ghost, immersion, baptism, you must ask of the Lord. Thank God he will do it for you. And look at uh, chapter 36, verse 36 there. It says in verse 36, then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it. I will do it. Everything the Lord has spoken, he will do. Everything the Lord has told you from the showers of blessing coming upon you, He will do that in Jesus. Now, verse 37. Verse 37 tells us you have heard what was spoken, your graves are opened, and then you have a total emancipation, and you are inquiring of the Lord. It says, Lord says, the Lord God. I will yet for this be inquired of. You see, every promise we attract to our lives by prayer. Every prophecy we attract to our lives by prayer. Every good thing that the Lord has promised we attract to ourselves by prayer. It says yet for this. For everything I promise and for all the proclamation yet for this shall be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. They will do it for you. I said they will do it for you. Our now is to repent. Our is to repent. You are coming near the patch, the place where everything heaven has provided tonight where it will be given unto you. I will have. I will receive. I will get. All the promises of God will be yes and amen in my life in Jesus' name. Look at Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23. This art now is to repent to restore, to return to the Redeemer. And I shall come. And you say, tonight is my night. I turn. I return. I restore. And I repent. The Redeemer will take your life. It will give you salvation. It will give you eternal life. It will give you a new life. 
and then it's not just you know i am saved and then i'm still as i was before he'll give you that holiness without which no man shall save the lord and your life will be holy and upright and righteous and clean in jesus name ezekiel chapter 18 we're reading from verse 23 have i any pleasure at all in the wicked that the wicked should die says the lord god and not that he shall return look at that word he shall return he shall return he shall return from his ways and live the lord is expecting that everyone that wants to have the new life and the showers of blessings and the progress everyone that wants to have everything the lord has promised that you will return you return from the wilderness of sin you return from the evil in your community you return from the gang gang gangsterism every evil thing you have been doing that you return from your ways and you will live and you will live in ezekiel chapter 18 reading from verse 13 in verse 30 it says therefore i will judge you O house of israel everyone according to his ways says the lord god look at this word now repent that's the word repent that's what he expects repent in every generation the people who have gone far away from god in their sin in their evil in their idolatry in in their occultism in their wickedness in their violence before salvation can come before redemption can come before the new life can come he wants them to repent and so he says repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions not some all not just a few all not just the majority from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin look at verse 31 in verse 31 cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will ye die o house of israel verse 32 in verse 32 it tells us for i have no pleasure in the death of him that died says the lord god therefore turn return you are coming to the lord tonight you are returning to the lord tonight you're saying bye bye to satan you're saying bye bye to all your sins and transgressions you're saying bye bye to evil spirit you're saying bye bye to all the defilement and all the violence and devilishness of the past it says turn yourselves and leave ye you will live i will live ezekiel chapter 33 verse 15. in ezekiel chapter 33 reading from verse 15 if the wicked restore you know what ezekiel is telling us ezekiel is saying the lord has sent me to bring you showers for a better life and the word the lord has given me what i will do he told me speak what you will do he told me hear what he will do he told me open he will open your graves and then what i will do again he said i must warn you and what you will do you will inquire and then are you will repent you will restore you will return to the redeemer as you come tonight he will not forsake you and he will not push you away in jesus name that is ezekiel chapter 33 verse 15 if the wicked restore the pledge give again that he had robbed what he had stolen he restored to the right owner 
what you are taking unjustly by evil, evil practice, it will return to the right owner. If the wicked restore the pledge and give again that he had robbed and walk in the statues of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. Somebody there, he shall surely live. Today is the day of a new life. Eternal life. Everlasting life. Heavenly life for you in Jesus' name. He shall live. He shall not die. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, none of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful. What's that? He repented. What's that? He restored what he had, what he had stood in before. What's that? He returned unto the Lord, the Redeemer. He has done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Verse 19. In verse 19, but if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. I bring life to you tonight. I bring eternal life to you tonight. I present heavenly life to everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. And as you repent and you come to the Lord, your Redeemer, the one who died for you on the cross of Calvary, new life will come to you. And power to live above sin, above all your weaknesses and deficiencies of the past, that power to live a newness of life, the Lord will grant unto you. Now, we come to the final S. And the final S is to surrender stony hearts to the Savior. Now, he is the one that can make the conversion and turn the stone into flesh. He is the one that can do a converting miracle, a creative miracle, a miracle that everybody can see that Pharaoh has turned, that Nebuchadnezzar had turned, that they had Hearted man, had stony woman, had hearted boy or girl, that a miracle of conversion has taken place, and now the stone is changed to flesh. But you must surrender and say, Lord, I cannot do it myself. Salvation, I cannot give it to myself. Eternal life, I cannot give it to myself. A new life, I cannot give it to myself. The heart of flesh, I cannot pretend and hypocritically act it out by myself. You and you alone will do it. And the Lord will do it in your life tonight. In Jesus' name. As you surrender i will surrender i said i will surrender you can hear me let me hear you i will surrender and the lord will bring that new life a heart of flesh a soft heart a feeling heart a heart that is sensitive to the guidance and leading of the Lord, the Lord will give it to you in Jesus' name. Look at Ezekiel chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 19. And I will give them one heart. I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. I was waiting for your amen. amen. And will give them an heart of flesh. The heart is the center of our lives. 
even the physical life in the heart that pumps all the blood everywhere and if that heart is tuny and cannot move and cannot do its work we're dead the heart is the center of our action out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaking and if that heart is tuny that life will be sinful but God said I will take away the stony heart out of their flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh another amen, amen. then in verse 20 in verse 20 it tells us that they may walk in my statutes why do I want to give them the heart of flesh why am I going to remove the heart of stone what am I going to remove? The stubbornness of heart. What am I going to remove? The hardness of heart. What am I going to remove? The deadly sinful heart from them and give them a heart of flesh is so that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them and they shall be my people as long as the stony heart is there. As long as Pharaoh's stubborn heart is there, you'll not be a child of God. But it takes away the stony heart and it gives you a heart of flesh that they may be my people and I will be their God. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 36, I'm reading from verse 25. Ezekiel 36, 25, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Upon who? Upon you. I said upon who? And ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And then in verse 26, it says, a new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take, look at this, the second time, saying it the second time, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. It will be done. I said it will be done. For who? I said, for who? Is she there tonight? Is she there tonight? Is she running away from the end of, before the end of the meeting? Is she staying for prayer? Is she going to allow God to do everything the Lord has prophesied, proclaimed, pronounced, and preached is going to do? It will be done. It will be done. Now we have heard, and it's going to give us the sevenfold showers. Salvation has come. Holiness has come. Not only that, a pouring of His Spirit has come. Wholeness. Somebody shout, wholeness. Expectation. Recovery and strength, it will happen to you. The Lord is going to start with the salvation. That's why it starts. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? The foundation is the salvation of the Lord. It's bowed and eyes closed. I welcome you tonight to this great possibility in your life that Ezekiel has spoken about that is going to give you so great salvation is yours tonight I said it's yours tonight it's bowed, eyes closed you want to have you want to receive you want to enjoy you want to experience this so great salvation that all your sins will be forgiven. Your life will be turned around. And then heaven will record your name down. That you are a partaker of the salvation of the Lord. Even tonight, wherever you are, raise up that hand. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much there. Praise the Lord. Raise up that hand. You see, tonight, 
I want a real salvation from heaven. It's not something that I just guess. Maybe I have. Maybe I don't have. If you're not sure, even though you have, you know, been going to a good church and whatever, but you want to have real, definite experience of salvation, what are you? Raise up that hand. It'll touch your heart. It'll transform your heart. A new thing will happen in your heart today. Raise up that hand. As you are raising up the hand, God bless you there. You can rise up. You can rise up. Stand up. Stand up. But Jesus, stand like a soldier and say, yes, Lord, here am I tonight. I want your salvation. And he will not deny you. He said, he will, not lo he will no longer prolong or delay. That today, he will give each unto you. Uh, there, stand up right there. As you stand up. You open, you close your mouth. They will yet inquire of me. Inquire of him. Ask the Lord and say, Lord, I want real salvation. I want real new life. I want genuine salvation. I want salvation from heaven. And I want a change of life. I want total transformation of life. Take this stubborn heart away from me. Take this sinful heart away from me. Take this stony heart away from me. Grant me your salvation now. Remember, repent. Remember anything stolen that you have in your possession, you're willing to restore them to the owners. You're willing to make right your life. And then you say, no, Lord, grant me this new life. And it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. Are you there now? You're raising up your hand. You're standing up. Keep the hand up. And keep standing. I will pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what we have heard. We thank you because you said you will open our graves and you bring us into the realm of your grace do it tonight in jesus name you said you will cleanse you said you will wash away all the filthiness do it in every life now in jesus name let there be salvation let there be righteousness let there be holiness. Let there be a change of life in everyone that comes to you tonight. In Jesus' name. Lord, send it from heaven. Lord, grant them the faith to have and to receive and to experience it right now. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. It is done. It is done. Your promise is fulfilled. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.